Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News Today starts now. Protesters are back on the streets of Detroit with a new demand for the mayor and police chief ahead of the renewal of a facial recognition contract. And backlash over a Facebook post by an Oakland County official. His post on the recent protest that has a lot of people calling for his resignation. And take a look here. Ooh. What a beautiful Sunday morning shot for us this morning. The sun is up a little mild out there. Talk to Andrew here in just a second. Good morning. It's 7 o'clock. I'm Grant Herms. And I'm Priya Mann. Thanks for staying with us on a beautiful Sunday morning. That yeah. sunshine is just glorious. It looks great. Hopefully we can stay in the sun because it was a little chilly coming in this morning. Yeah, it was, Andrew. Hey, Priya and Grant, many folks will need their jackets as they wake up this morning, but not for long because temperatures will rise into the mild region of 60s to about 70 degrees later on today. I know many folks want it warmer, but at least we have all that sunshine to enjoy for today. And warmer conditions are coming back in no time. That'll be coming up in a few minutes. First, we'll see 66 degrees at noon, near 70 degrees later this afternoon. Sunrise started at 556. And this is the last Sunday of spring, by the way. Summer begins on Saturday. Now, we still have lakeshore flood warnings up for Macomb, Wayne, and Monroe counties until 10 o'clock later on tonight. So be mindful in those areas. Watch where you park and make sure you try to get the higher ground if flooding is, a, is an issue in those areas for you later today. 48 degrees, we're up one degree since last hour and farther away, further away from the record low. The record low this morning is 42 set back in 1978. Some temperatures are still in the low 40s at this hour. But again, everyone gets milder today and we'll talk about warmer, even hotter conditions later this week in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Andrew. Developing this morning, Sterling Heights police are investigating after a, a homicide after a man was found dead last night. This is the scene last night at the Fox Hill Plaza on Mound Road near 16 Mile. Police say a man in his 30s was found dead there. Police do not believe the public is in danger, but they are asking for anyone with information to please call Sterling Heights police. And protesters plan a public tribunal next Saturday for Mayor Duggan and the Detroit Police Department. Yeah, they say they want answers about how demonstrators were treated during the beginning of protests. Larry Spruill is reporting from downtown with the latest. It was another night of peaceful protest. The protesters marched for about five miles throughout downtown Detroit, but not before releasing another set of demands. It's day 15 of protests here in Detroit. Saturday's march started off just like the last 14 days. About a couple hundred people met at DPD first, but before marching, organizers with Detroit Will Breathe announced an addition to their growing demands. Detroit Will Breathe is holding a public tribunal next Saturday. Organizers Nakia Wallace and Tristan Taylor tell Local 4 they plan on putting both Mayor Mike Duggan and Detroit Police Chief James Craig on trial next Saturday. They want to question him about how things unfolded the first couple of days of protests. We're going to be uh, particularly focusing on the Tuesday where uh, over 100 people were arrested for no reason by DPD and excessive force was used, but also paying attention to the events leading up to that. Because I think it's going to be really important for people uh, who were protesting against police brutality to tell the talk about their experiences uh, with their engagement uh, with Detroit police. But Trish and Taylor says they're not stopping there. They're also calling out Detroit City Council just days before their vote about the facial recognition program on Tuesday. We want people to call in the city council to demand that they not renew that contract. And just like the other days, they marched throughout downtown Detroit, chanting no justice, no peace. March today, march tomorrow. I've spoken with Chief Craig over the last couple of weeks, and we talked about the officers using tear gas and riot gear. He says the officers only did that because they were provoked by the protesters. And all of that chaos happened. I was out here when it happened, way 30 minutes to 45 minutes after the 8 o'clock city curfew. Reporting at police headquarters, Larry Spruill, Local 4. An elected official in Oakland County is facing backlash for a Facebook post on the recent protests. Brandon Township trustee Robert Marshall wrote, quote, I was disappointed in these people because they were supporting a hate group that seeks to target police officers for harm and death. It was in reference to a Black Lives Matter protest held by the Ortonville Peaceful Anti-Racism Alliance. We asked Marshall about that post. The backlash that I've gotten has been number one that I'm a racist. 
Nothing could be further from the truth. But you're but you're labeling the entire movement as a hate group. That's what I'm asking. Are you are you calling the entire Black Lives Matter no. movement a hate group? No. That's what your your post is. No, that's not my post said at all. So you don't back down from your post? No, absolutely not. Will you nope. resign? Absolutely not. The post has hundreds of comments with a lot of people calling for his resignation. Breaking news this morning, an officer is fired and another placed on administrative duty following the deadly shooting of Rashad Brooks in Atlanta. The announcement late Saturday night as angry protesters flooded streets over the fatal shooting of Brooks, an unarmed black man who was killed by Atlanta police on Friday. Georgia Bureau of Investigation said Brooks was shot in a Wendy's parking lot Friday night after he scuffled with officers and ran away with one of their stun guns. Overnight, that same Wendy's went up in flames. Time now is 7.06 and Friends for Animals of Metro Detroit is offering a reward in two animal abuse cases. The first case is this dog believed to be abandoned at FAMD's shelter in Dearborn Friday. It's been neglected, suffering from a flea infestation, ear problems and is missing all its teeth. The dog is being cared for at the shelter. FAMD is also offering a reward after two kittens were found at Oakman and Warren. The kittens died from head injuries believed to be from abuse. If you have any information about the person responsible for the abuse of these animals, please call Friends for Animals of Metro Detroit. A 22-year-old Detroit man is arrested after a deadly hit-and-run accident in Roseville. It happened Saturday morning on Gratiot near Utica Road. Police say the driver hit and killed a 67-year-old Roseville man and drove off. The man's family says he was crossing the street when he was hit. We're told the driver was stopped by St. Clair Shores Police and arrested. Police say the driver will be charged with leaving the scene of a fatal accident. And out of the coronavirus and the new numbers here in Michigan. Yeah, the state has reported 180 more cases and 22 more lives lost in the past 24 hours. Out of the nearly 60,000 confirmed cases, nearly 45,000 people have recovered. Tomorrow, nail and hair salons, spas and barber shops will be allowed to reopen for the first time in months. Grant, you got a haircut before Andrew and I were able to book one. Yeah, I get mine on Tuesday, oh, which is I, great. It's all yeah. looked very different next weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have mine on Thursday, so. Okay, okay. We got to share notes. We'll both have new dues. I yeah, like it. Exactly. How about you, Andrew? You got to share me those secrets of getting in line early. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have temperatures right now that are mostly in the 40s and 50s. Later this afternoon, yes, it'll be milder, and we still have the sunshine. But when does it really get warmer? I mean, summer is right around the corner. We'll talk about that and a look at your seven-day forecast in minutes.